Coming up, I've got a really big tablet and a really small phone. Or is it the other way around? Next on Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, visit Stamps.com now. Click the radio microphone and use the promo code Before You Buy. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to AudiblePodcasts.com slash Before You Buy. It's Leo Laporte. It's time for Before You Buy, the show where uh, we ask, we get great products in, and we ask, or maybe not so great products in, and ask our uh, our uh, staff to review them. Sometimes we have a little bit of a competition. I don't think there was too much of a competition to review this honking beast. A 13-inch tablet? Is there a market for it? Let's ask uh, Jason Howell of All About Android what he thinks about the Toshiba Excite. Hey, what's up? I'm Jason Howell, and I'm here with the Toshiba Excite 13 with a 13.3-inch display. It's a huge tablet. You can get, for $650, the 32-gig version, or for $750, the 64-gig version. First, let's dive into the specs. The Toshiba Excite 13 has a 13.3-inch display, 1600 by 900 resolution. It weighs 2.2 pounds and measures in about 10.1 millimeters thick. It's powered by a Tegra 3 quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor with one gig of onboard RAM. There are two speakers down at the bottom, an SD card slot, full-size SD card slot for a maximum of 32 gigs of extended storage, and it's running ice cream sandwich. All right, let's first take a look at the design. There's a subtle rounding of the edges here, as well as kind of on the bevel, that really makes it comfortable to use over long periods of time. The grippers on the back are actually really handy. It makes sure that the device doesn't slip out of your hands. Found that really nice. Plenty of ports and slots for expandability if you need to have those. At 2.2 pounds, it starts to feel a little bit heavy if you're holding it in your hand all the time. Now for the big differentiator of the device, that is obviously the size of the device. Typing on the keyboard in landscape is actually really difficult to do if you happen to be holding the device like this. However, if you place it on your lap and use it as if you were using a, uh, a hardware keyboard on your laptop, it's actually a breeze to use. The keys are about the same size as they are on your laptop, not a little bit bigger, so it's easy to punch out those long emails pretty quickly. This is really meant to be a home-use tablet. I think that's how Toshiba is marketing this, uh, meant to be something that you might find in your kitchen. Uh, they actually include this stand, which is a really nice inclusion. It allows me to do what I'm doing for this review. As well, it has a way that you can lay it down for typing as if it were a keyboard. Very handy, and this would allow you to have this propped up in your kitchen with a recipe on it or propped up to watch a movie. All right, so the display itself. The resolution, I'd say, is only okay. The pixel density is low at 138 points per inch, and I noticed it pretty quickly, especially in the Roboto text that you find in ice cream sandwich devices, a very narrow, fine text. And that's just one example of how the text can kind of break up due to the pixel density. Video playback, most of the time I'd say the videos that I watched if they matched 16 by nine screen ratio, looked pretty good. Outside of that, when it's doing its own scaling, it can get a little rough around the edges. Same goes for games actually. Riptide is fantastic on this device and it looks great. But when I'm playing an included game that came stock with the device, Reckless Racing, it didn't look so great throughout the entirety of the game. Now, the developer might partially be to blame for not scaling it properly to the device, but it's unfortunate that they include it with the device because it really shows off how something that's improperly scaled to the display can look. As for Ice Cream Sandwich, pretty close to stock, minus a few minor changes, and that's really good to see. And basic operation seemed pretty smooth. Browsing, on the other hand, everything just seemed slow and clumsy. I even installed Chrome and that didn't seem to improve it a whole lot. 
but pinching to zoom to zoom in and out and scrolling through, it was just a very blocky experience. I was not very thrilled with the camera performance on this tablet. The five megapixel rear facing camera with LED flash rendered pictures that were just really blocky when you brought it onto your desktop and looked at it on a different display. And the camera was slow, especially in low light situations. Good light, it seems to take pretty rapidly. That was a little slow. But uh, low light situations I'd hit to take the picture and maybe a couple of seconds later the flash would suddenly blink and it would finally take. So that was a little unfortunate. It's also capable of recording 1080p video, but quite frankly, the frame rate was just extremely jumpy on playback. The front facing two megapixel camera is serviceable for video conferencing, but again, video is pretty jumpy on that camera as well. All right, so let's take a look at the pros of the device. Gaming is actually very engaging on the large screen and amply powered. This is great for media consumption, and the included stand makes this an excellent home companion device. And now the cons. The screen size can certainly make apps and games more difficult to use. Somewhat awkward to hold and operate over long periods of time. Camera performance leaves a lot to be desired. And you have to admit this tablet is pretty pricey. Overall, I commend Toshiba for trying something new, but this size of a tablet is really only gonna to appeal to a particular group of people. So having said that, I'd say try it. You might be part of the group that thinks that a 13-inch tablet isn't too big, uh, but you won't know until you pick it up and check it out for sure. There's definitely space for this size of a tablet. You can check out my reviews on another show I do all about Android at twit.tv AAA. Thank you so much for checking out my review of the Toshiba Excite 13. Thanks, Jason. I don't know. Try? It's awfully big. It does feel, I wish you could feel it, though, because you expect it to be really heavy with this big glass screen and... Uh, and the size, and it isn't actually, it's fairly, fairly lightweight. Uh, coming up, we got two products, not one, but two products named Go. How can you tell the difference? I don't know. One's a headphone and one's a scanner. Our own Burke McQuinn will review the Doxy Go scanner in just a moment. But first, I got to tell you about a great tool for any small business, really anybody who does a lot of mailing. It's called stamps.com. You've heard me talk about it. It's so cool. You never have to go to the post office again. Postage prices going up, don't worry. You'll always have exactly the right postage. Uh, post offices closing, don't worry. You've got a post office at your desk with stamps.com. Mailbox is disappearing, don't worry. The mail carrier comes to you and picks it up. Stamps.com. I want you to go there right now, Mac or PC. Stamps.com lets you print real U.S. postage from your computer and your printer. And we've got a fantastic special offer for you. See that? $110 value. All you got to do is use the promo code before you buy. Click the radio microphone in the upper right hand corner. And before you, there it is. Welcome, listeners. And before you buy, $55 in postage coupons, free digital scale. You pay $5 shipping and handling. You get a supply kit and a four-week trial of the most amazing service. You know, this is kind of what, it, what computers were invented to do. Save you time, save you money. Yes, save you money, because the post office offers discounts on stamps.com you cannot get at the post office. You're up to 21% on express mail, up to 15% on priority mail. I just love Stamps.com. I know you will, too. Please take advantage of our no-risk trial. Go to Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click the radio microphone button. Use the offer code before you buy, all one word, and that'll give you a $110 no-risk trial offer. And that scale is so cool. Before you buy is the offer code at Stamps.com. We thank them so much for their support of uh, the Stamps.com show. All right. Uh, it's time to invite Burke McQuinn over here. Uh, Burke is one of my favorite people at Twit. Uh, he spends a lot of time here. In fact, sometimes we'll find him sleeping here. Not unusual. Hey, Burke, it's good to see you. Hi. Uh, we met because very early on, I had a mixer that died, and Colleen, our engineer, found you. She at, came to a repair, one of the repair shops. Yeah, yeah and you fixed it. And you fixed more and more of our stuff, and pretty soon we said, you know, we, we really think we could, we, could, <laughs> we could use this guy. And you've been with Twit for a couple of years now, three years? Uh, it's it's almost four. Almost three. Almost three. All right. Well, finally, we're going to get you on camera here. He's just, he's just great. I love Burke. To review this, this is called the Doxy Go. And I gather it's a scanner because it's got a little slot here. And a it's little a battery-powered scanner. Okay. Um, what kind of battery? It's cordless, uh, not wireless. Um, cordless? So what you the don't, you don't. Well, you need a USB cable to actually transfer ah. the photos 
So when you're scanning, do you have to have the plugged in? That's correct. Okay. Um, well, unless you unless you have an adapter that has a iFi card, some sort of wireless. Yeah. So it will also scan to an SD card. Yes. Okay. Yes, it will. And so you could use the Wi-Fi card for Wi-Fi. Correct. If I just scanned to a regular SD card, could I then pop mm -hmm. the card? Absolutely. So it could be. I could take this to the library, for instance. Yes, you could, and it'll pop it'll an SD card, and it'll uh, scan somewhere uh, around 600 photos uh, per say, charge. Per charge. Double A batteries. Um, you know, actually, I didn't check that part. They're in here somewhere. But um, I don't want to take. I did out. have to. It did have to charge for about uh, almost oh, forty-five minutes. It's rechargeable over USB. Oh yes. Oh, absolutely. oh, oh so it isn't batteries. This is rechargeable. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. And then what? I just stick it in. Which end do I just stick it in here? You got something Turn. I can scan? Uh, yep. Now we don't have an SD card in here. That's okay. So is it just for photos, or oh, will up, it do pieces up. of paper too? Um, it'll do full-size sheets of paper. So I could business scan cards. documents, business cards. Oh, the other, the other way. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Oh, and you probably on something like this, you want to use the... And if you sort of guide, put it in either right? of the corners, it'll adjust, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Is it not cooperating? You know, it doesn't have any memory in it. Does that matter? Wait a minute. I think it's... it's oh, yeah. look at that. Okay. There it goes like that. So it's pretty quick. Yeah. What's it's the about, image quality It's about eight, like? eight, uh, eight pages a minute. Okay. Uh, they say that it, you can do up to 600 DPI. I couldn't find the setting to do that. Okay. It would change it. But default is 300. <laughs> okay, um, that's can, pretty good. Can, yeah, and you can save it uh, to PDF, um, searchable PDF, right from their doc, or their app, excuse me. Um, so you can I can do Google, You can do Google Docs. It'll go straight, straight into your dri Google Drive. People, for instance, uh, often go to libraries uh, or research places for genealogy research. You, you could bring this if they had yeah. a bunch of it's pictures. Not, it's not a flatbed scanner replacement by any means. You have uh, to be able to have the individual piece of paper yeah, it's, to it's feed very, it's, it. It's, if, you, if it's quick and dirty and that's what you want, right. then it's, and it's, a, it's pretty good. Text is decent? You can read the text and all that? Uh, text is all right. Um, you know, it will do searchable, but uh, it's, it's certainly not archive quality by any means. So this is the Doxy Go. How much? Uh, the MSRP is $199. I believe they're selling it for 149 though. 149 It's a rechargeable 300 DPI, possibly 800 DPI. Or 600. Or 600 DPI 600 scanner. Max. It scans either to a USB cable connected to a computer. Maybe when you're at home, you keep it that mm -hmm. way. Or use an SD card. It has an SD card slot. You can put the SD card memory in there, scan to that, bring it home, pop that into your computer. Yep. And, yeah, and the battery recharges about half an hour through the USB slot. That's not bad. Yeah, it doesn't even come with a... With the power supply. So you might bring a laptop, plug it in, and charge mm -hmm. it uh, that yeah. way if you're at the library. And uh, um, Mac or PC software? Mac or PC, um, uh, iPhone, or not iPhone, excuse me, iPad. With, uh, really? But, but they say, they, they advertise it that way, but, but you, you need, you need a slot. Kit. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. You need a camera connection kit, yeah. And, uh, it'll, yeah. and it'll stick to cloud apps. Well, give me the pros and cons in the Doxy Go. So the pros are... Obviously, that it's cordless. You can take it wherever you need to. Um, the price, not so much a pro. Um, I think the price is a little high. So that's a con. Um, that's we'll give that a con. con. Yeah. Um, and uh, let me see. I have I have your list here in case you... Cordless is pro, <laughs> in case you forgot. Well, it's, let me, here's my list. I Sorry. like the fact that it's rechargeable. Get your list. He's got it. You should have scanned it. You could have had it in the memory. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> we'll turn it on. on. <laughs> so it's it's cordless, which is nice. It charges fast. Goes a long time. What are the cons? What didn't you like about it? Um, the, it's not a flatbed scanner replacement, basically. So you can't and, do and books. And the, pri the price is is it is pretty a bit steep, steep yeah. um, for the quality. Yeah, um, you have to have the convenience individual is, sheets it, of paper. Is definitely a pro, right? And it does have OCR in its uh, software. So uh, overall, buy, try, don't buy. What do you think on the Doxy Go? Um, I would give it a, a hesitant try. A tr <laughs> that's, that's a try that's almost a don't buy. It's like right on the edge of don't buy. All right, three hundred dollars is a little. I mean, two hundred dollars is a little steep. Sure. But if you get it for one hundred fifty bucks, maybe yeah. that's maybe that's a good price. For Fifty dollars, yes, it might be worth it. All right, hey, thank you, Burke McQuinn. The Doxy Pro, Doxy Go, not so pro. The Doxy Go. Go. No pro. All right. We're going to get some mini reviews now.
And Nicole Lee starts us off with another object named the Go. It's the Plantronics Backbeat Go. These are headphones or maybe a headset. Let's take a look, Nicole. I'm Nicole Lee from Before You Buy and the Twit Network, and I'm reviewing the Plantronics Backbeat Go Stereo Bluetooth Headset. Now, the interesting thing about these particular pair of stereo headset is that it's basically made for working out, for running, or just a regular commuter. Um, as you can see here, it comes with a pretty interesting thick cord here. And this, Plantronics claims, is a tangle-free cord, so you can just dump this into your bag, take it out, no crazy wires that are all tangled up. Um, and, I, and I have to say, from my brief experience um, testing these headphones, it does definitely uh, stand true. These wires do not tangle at all. These headphones also come with uh, different sized earbud covers for different sized ears. It comes with um, small, medium, and large. I'm using the medium size right here. And it also comes with two clip-on stabilizers, and that's if you're doing particularly rigorous workout, you want these stabilizers so that these headphones can stay in your ear. Now you may be wondering where are all the controls on this a very simple minimalist set of headphones. On the side here, on this right, the right side of uh, the earbuds are the controls. You have the usual call button right here as well as the volume rocker controls. On the side, a very teeny tiny is the um, pairing button or the power button as well. When you pair uh, the Backbeat Go to your smartphone, like an iPhone, for example, it's super easy to pair, pretty seamless, no silly pin code or password to go through. Um, you will see a small uh, battery life indicator for the headset, which is great if you're running around, you don't have time to pair your headset, you can see how much battery life it has left. As for battery life, Plantronics claims is around 4.5 hours of listening or talk time, and I have to say that's pretty accurate. Um, from my experience, it's up to 10 days standby time as well. Now to the pros and cons of these headphones. First of all, it's a tangle-free cord, like I mentioned. And second of all is that it's actually very comfortable in the ear, these sort of nice rubbery silicone earbud coverage is very comfortable in the ear. And the other pro is that the sound quality is actually pretty decent. It's not as good as your fancy Bose headset, but um, for what it is, it's actually pretty good, and the call quality was decent as well. Now onto the cons of the headset. Uh, while these earbud covers do fit really nice and comfortably in the ear, they almost fit too well. If you're running around outside, you won't be able to hear much environmental noise, which might be important if you're running around in busy streets and so forth, so that might be a con for you. Another con is that the base is a little thin. Um, the audio quality is pretty good, but if you care about really full sounding bass, these are not the headphones for you. Now for whether you should buy, try, or don't buy, I have to say it's a buy. Sure, it's a little bit pricey around $100, but you do get a pretty lightweight, you know, awesome sounding headset. Um, the battery life is pretty good. It pairs well with your smartphone. And um, for the price and for the convenience, I have to say it's a buy. Hi, my name is Chad Johnson. I'm with Twit and Before You Buy, reviewing the Corsair K90 Gaming Keyboard. Uh, the biggest feature about this keyboard for gaming is that it uses mechanical switches uh, in its design. Uh, and these switches are actually the Cherry MX Red keyboard switches. The keys feel is a very specific thing that most gamers or programmers or people who use keyboards a lot like in a keyboard, and I have to agree, it feels really nice when typing. Let's get into the construction of this keyboard. It features an aluminum back, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, it is a USB connection, and it also has a USB pass-through, so uh, this USB port right here on the back of the keyboard just passes straight through to uh, your uh, computer. It also has a full length palm rest and there is 36 kilobytes of internal storage on the board. What would you use that for? Well over here you have up, uh, 18 macro keys and uh, you can have up to three pages of these uh, macro keys and all of the things that you would store on those macro keys for gaming uh, can be stored on the board itself. That means that you can take this board to your friend's house away from your normal computer and you have all your macros saved on the board 
Some more features about this keyboard is that it offers full matrix anti-ghosting and 20 key rollover. Uh, the 20 key rollover means that you can simult simultaneously push 20 keys at once without missing a keystroke. Uh, that doesn't quite make sense. You only really have 10 fingers, but it does it all the same and it's a really cool feature. Also, this keyboard is backlit and it uses uh, laser etched keys, which are you know, a nice, nice thing to say that you have in a keyboard. Uh, there's also uh, function keys on the sides for pause, play, rewind, and uh, next, as well as a mute button and a volume rocker. Uh, it also has a Windows lock uh, button, so it locks down the Windows key so that if you're in a game and you accidentally hit that Windows button, uh, it will not take you out of the game, pulling you out of whatever crazy scenario you've gotten yourself into in the game. Finally, this keyboard cost $130. Let's get into the pros and cons of this device. First pro is that it is really solidly built. Uh, the backlit keyboard is a really nice feature, and the onboard memory to store all of your macro keys is really nice. In my cons, the price coming in at $130, uh, there is zero Mac compatibility, and then finally, this is not a fully mechanical keyboard. What I mean by that is these G keys, these macro keys, your function keys, the insert home, uh, delete, uh, end, page up and page down keys, these are not mechanical right here. All the normal keys that you would normally use, like your arrow keys and your number keys, those are mechanical, but not every single key on this board is fully mechanical. Uh, buy, try, don't buy for the Corsair K90 uh, gaming keyboard, I'm going to say try. Uh, I think that this is a really good keyboard, and I certainly absolutely enjoyed typing away on this very, very uh, comfortable keyboard, but it's not going to be for everyone, and the price is a little bit steep. So, I want you guys to try it out to see if it's for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Chad Johnson with Twit.tv, and before you buy, see you next time. How much, how much was this? 150 bucks for a keyboard. It's nice, though. It's nice and solid. Here, let's do a little test. Perk, catch. Hey, perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Chad. Coming up, I'm going to review what is easily the hottest phone on the market. It's actually just about to go on the market with all four of the major carriers in the U.S. It's already on sale around the world. The Samsung Galaxy S3. I've been using it for a little over a week, and I, well, you'll just have to stay tuned. For my review. But first, uh, always A plus positive reviews from my friends at audible.com. First discovered Audible when I was at Tech TV and I was driving two hours, maybe three or four, depending on traffic a day. I would have gone out of my gourd if Audible hadn't been around. I joined Audible in 2000, maybe 2001, and I have over 500 books in my Audible library. That's one of the things I love about Audible is this Audible app. It's so sweet. In fact, I'll show it to you on the uh, Galaxy uh, S3, because, of course, the first thing I do when I get a new phone is I put Audible on there. This is for Android and uh, iPhone, and they're going to do a version of this app on Windows Phone. Paul Therott has it. It's already in beta, so it's coming soon. Did I say 500 books? This is my entire library going back to 2001. Pick a book, any book, and you can listen to it again, which is great. So many great titles. Audible has 100,000 titles in science fiction, history, uh, thrillers. Um, there's, this is a diet book. You on a diet. That worked really well. Uh, I Just on and on and on. There's always something to listen to. Hey, here's a great one. I really got a lot out of this. This is Jeff Hawkins. Let me, oops, wrong one. Jeff Hawkins on intelligence. This would be a great one for your first book. If you go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy, you can, uh, you can listen to this book uh, or any one of the 100,000 other one credit books just uh, by going to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy and signing up for the gold account. That's a book a month and uh, your first month's free, your first book's free, and it's yours to keep. Cancel at any time, so it doesn't have to cost you anything. On intelligence, Jeff Hawkins is a guy who founded uh, the Palm and came up with the idea of graffiti, but he's also a neuroscientist and a very smart guy. On intelligence talks about how the human brain works. He's currently involved in a company called Numento. They're trying to make memory chips 
that work the same way the human brain does, massively parallel. If you've ever wondered why human brains are so very different from computer brains and what the challenges are of making a truly intelligent computer, this is a fantastic book. I loved it. It's called On Intelligence. And this or any one of the other one credit books on Audible could be yours for free right now. Just go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And if you have an Android or iPhone, definitely get the Audible app. You don't have to have it, but it sure adds to my listening. And, you know, they have some fun things, gaming and so forth. Uh, so you, can, you can win badges. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy the app is free on the Play Store on Google uh, or on the uh, App Store on iTunes. And we thank Audible so much for supporting our shows. So, my turn. Going to review the Galaxy S3. In fact, you kind of got already a little bit of a peek at it. This is the latest, hottest Android phone, a very strong contender for the best Android phone out there with the HTC One. Uh, this is the uh, version I'm using is the unlocked international version because, of course, I had to have it before everybody else. And I'll tell you a few of the things I love about this phone. First of all, it is a 4.8 inch Super AMOLED display that is just gorgeous. Now, Samsung did make this a pentile display. That's the same kind of display that the Galaxy Nexus used, and I didn't like because I had I saw a lot of color noise in the in the whites on uh, the Galaxy Nexus. Well, they've avoided that problem with this display. There is nothing to complain about. They have three modes, a dynamic mode, a natural mode. I have it on the most dynamic, colorful mode because it's so colorful. I just love this display. And by the way, notice how smoothly, this is Samsung's TouchWiz 4 to go with the ice cream sandwich on this phone. Notice how smoothly I'm going from page to page. There are, this is, believe it or not, a quad-core Exynos processor in here running at 1.4 gigahertz. That's a lot of power for a smartphone. So much so that I thought, you know, I'm going to put my uh, aquarium wallpaper. I never use this wallpaper because uh, it uses up so many CPU cycles. On a normal phone, this would slow it down. But you know what? This phone is so fast, I can afford to spend some CPU cycles on having fish. Let me just uh, feed these fish. I'll just tap it right up here, and they all come to the top of the screen and get their food. It is dinner time, after all. Uh, th this is the 16-gigabyte version. They do sell a 32-gigabyte version. Uh, you can add an SD card. So I've got the 16 gigabyte version with a 32 gig SD card. To me, that's plenty of horsepower, plenty of storage. This uses an 8 megahertz, I'm sorry, megapixel camera. In fact, according to iFixit and their teardown of the Samsung Galaxy S3, this is exactly the same Sony part that the iPhone 4S uses. And I did find, in fact, an excellent camera. And the camera app on here, this is the Samsung camera app, not the uh, ice cream sandwich camera app, has some really sweet features. 1080p 30 frame per second video that looks spectacular. Uh, and you see, we also have some special kind of shooting modes, including an HDR mode that I found was quite good. A smile shot that actually looks for smiles in the picture and waits till somebody smiles. And a panorama that's great, that's automatic and very fast using this 1.4 gigahertz processor. I take eight images, it stitches them together almost as fast as I can save it. There's also a cartoon mode that you know, some other modes that you'll hardly ever use. It's got a decent flash, although, as always, flash on camera phones isn't very good. I'd say this camera is not quite as good as the iPhone 4S camera. I, obviously, Apple's done some real optimization in their software, but it's pretty sweet. Now, you are going to want that 1080p video because this is an HD screen, 1280 lengthwise by 720 across that makes this over 300 dots per inch is this a retina display you bet it's probably the best display i've ever used and that includes the high quality iphone 4s display so a gorgeous phone all the carriers verizon sprint at&t and t-mobile in the u.s say we're going to carry it by the end of june early july and the prices i've seen which are kind of interesting uh, are very affordable. They are charging $200 with a two-year contract. That, that is about $100 less than the premium Android phones have been in the, in the past. Obviously, they want to be competitive. By the way, that $200 is a pretty good deal, well, at least on the unlocked version. I got two years of Dropbox, 50 gigs of Dropbox storage included in that price. Unfortunately, AT&T and I believe Sprint have both declined to take advantage of that Dropbox offer. So for reasons I don't understand, you won't get it. One thing you will get, though, is an Android exclusive. This is the amazing Flipboard, which has been out on the iPhone since December. 
It's already out on Android, but only on the Galaxy S3. And boy, it's a great way to show off this beautiful, fast device. I mean, it really, really looks good. I have to say, I'm very, very happy uh, with this phone in every respect. Are there negatives? Well, you've heard me say about talk about the pros. Very, very fast. Probably faster than you'll ever need on a smartphone. A gorgeous 4.8-inch, 1280 by 720 P screen. You can't get better than that, at least not right now. It's smaller than my Galaxy Note, but you know what? It, I like it a little bit smaller. I still have as much resolution, as much stuff on the screen as I did on the Note. It doesn't have the Galaxy Note's uh, pen, the S Pen, no stylus included. I don't really uh, miss that. Um, the, in fact, the only negative I could come up with on this phone is because it's so... Oh, look how thin it is, too. And they've also eliminated the bump that was part of the Galaxy S2. So thin, very light. Uh, it's plastic on the back, Gorilla Glass 2 on the front. And that is my negative on this. It's kind of slippery. And because, uh, you know, the Galaxy S3 is a fairly new phone, there are a dearth of accessories, very few decent cases available. It's not like an iPhone in that respect. And... I kind of miss that. Samsung has bundled some very nice apps. The TouchWiz interface uh, 4.0, I think, is quite good. It's very unobtrusive. Uh, but you, of course, could have used another launcher like Nova on, on this. Or, uh, uh, In fact, I'm going to be trying one called Apex a little bit later on. Uh, the Galaxy uh, S Memo application is quite good. I, I like that a lot. The camera app that uh, Samsung's provided here is good. They have their new Music Hub music store on here. I'm not going to use that. But believe it or not, the music player that this comes with... It's pretty darn good. In fact, good enough that I replaced uh, replaced Double Twist uh, with it. It's the music player I use. Oh, and that's another nice feature of this phone. It supports DLNA. So I was able to launch Pandora and the music player and immediately play, play music from my phone to my home stereo system. My Onkyo AV receiver supports DLNA. Many TV sets do. Even my little Grace Mondo internet radio supports it. So I was able to play audio from this phone to a variety of devices. Video looks great on it. It's a little slippery. It doesn't have a whole bunch of accessories. But in every other respect, this is a phone worthy of being uh, of the title, the best phone on the market. Certainly uh, at least as good as the HTC One, which is the tough one out there right now. I think this is a fantastic phone. Uh, they got pre-orders of 9 million units uh, before the phone was even available in the, uh, even announced in the U.S., I suspect by the time it ships June 21st in the U.S., uh, they're going to have sold very many more. This is probably going to be the biggest selling phone out there, um, for some time to come. The Galaxy S3, buy it, buy it. There's no question in my mind. This is absolutely the nicest phone, uh, I've ever used. And whenever I show it to anybody in person, they, they ooh and ah. They say, boy, that is, that is really gorgeous. This screen will just knock your socks off. Hey, that's it for this edition of uh, Before You Buy. I hope you enjoyed our show. We put all our reviews, the little ones and the big ones, on YouTube. You can watch them in their entirety at youtube.com slash twit. Thanks to our reviewers, uh, Jason Howell with his giant... You know, he's about eight feet tall, so this probably didn't look so big in his hands, but it looks all... Come here. How... See, see, it fits him. <laughs> Thank you for ducking into the camera. It fits him. Thank you, Jason, for that review. Nicole Lee, uh, Brett, uh, Burke McQuinn, we really appreciate uh, your review. Uh, who else did a review? Was it Chad? Chad Johnson also. Thank you for your review of the gaming keyboards. Have we reviewed every gaming keyboard now? Are there any more that he can review? He seems to like those. Maybe we'll get some, some more for him. I'll tell you what. You give us some feedback. Let us know. You want more gaming keyboard reviews? You want more Chad? or not, you email us byb at twit.tv. Thanks to our producer, Nicole Lee, for creating uh, the uh, show. Thanks to you for watching. We do the show, or at least the, my parts of the show, every Thursday at about 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We always love it if you tune in and watch, but you can always get a copy of Before You Buy from our site, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast aggregator like iTunes, and make sure you watch every week. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you got to watch... Before you buy. La, 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 la.